uh, minister, we all saw that, or we rather keep seeing every day, you take your fitness really seriously, including today morning with the peacocks in the beautiful garden. And so in keeping with that, in keeping with uh, with the beautiful background that, <laughs> that Asocham has put together for this whole uh, movement of Fit India, which our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Modi himself, uh, you know, swears by. And I think uh, in these times, it couldn't be even more apt that fitness is something we all have to work on, whether it was pre, during, post-COVID, come whatever. And I think corporate India can play a huge role in creating even more awareness. And I think uh, with that very brief introduction, I would like to say up front to everyone that we really want to keep this tight 60 minutes. So in, in sports, as they say, timing is everything. So I think we should all keep to our timing today, uh, sirs and lady. And I'll, I'll come to each one as we, as we uh, bring in. But I would like to uh, get on uh, our first panelist, Mr. Shri Vineet Agarwal the Senior Vice President of ASOCHAM, to please give us your welcome address, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Karan, and uh, my heartiest welcome to Shri Kiran Rijju. He is uh, the Honorable Minister for, Sport, uh, for Youth Affairs and Sports. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. It is indeed a privilege to have you speak at the role of Corporate India for a Fit India. Um, the, as we know, the sporting industry has a huge impact on global economy because of its association with various sectors like infrastructure, tourism, uh, education. And of course, the most important is the well-being of people, the psychological impact that sports have on, on each one of us. And uh, sir, you've taken this to a next level in, uh, in, in your ministry by, by not just communicating the goal and the, the vision of how sport should be in India, but actually living it by yourself, by doing it every single day. I will not talk uh, more about in terms of what the government is doing or not doing or what you will be saying, sir, but I can just quickly share a, a minute of our experience as an organization. My foundation, my company's foundation set up a uh, a sports uh, academy in in the rural part of Rajasthan. And the idea was to go beyond cricket and football. The idea was to go to rural sports, sports which uh, in uh, rural Rajasthan and others where uh, kids are very good at. So be it wrestling, be it boxing, be it even running for that matter. Um, and our, my, my father's objective here is that at some point can someone from that small village or from that area, actually uh, go and represent the country in uh, uh, in the Olympics and win a medal. So that was his vision. That is his vision and dream. And he started building this a few years ago. And uh, of course, there were lots of challenges. So this is uh, one point that I want to make here, sir, is that the ability, the, the ease of actually setting up institutions like this uh, can be made uh, easier. And uh, it will help organizations like ours to really ramp up quickly because just to get the basic clearances took us almost a year um, and uh, uh, so organizations like SAI can work on uh, uh, capacity building more and more will be useful. So with your blessings and uh, the nation's blessing the organization started before COVID and uh, we had uh, in fact it was so successful that we attracted children from places like Arunachal as well. And they actually won medals at the national level, which you, in fact, sir, gave them uh, those medals from our uh, academy, uh, small academy in Rajasthan. So this is just a, a way that how corporate can get involved and really contribute to the growth of sports in India. Uh, with these words, I again, extend my warm welcome you, to you, sir, Honorable Minister for Sports and Youth Affairs. And we look forward to an interesting discussion. Karan, you're on mute. Thank you. Vineet, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Vineet Ji, for that uh, welcome address. And uh, it's even more uh, uh, amazing to learn 
that apart from being the senior vice president of Astrocham, you have led such a beautiful academy and set up at grassroots in Rajasthan. So kudos to you and your team and your leadership for that. And I must say also, talking about Astrocham, we all know a leading apex body, Chamber of Commerce in India, four and a half lakh corporate members uh, that today are part of Astrocham. And I must say, over the years, it's been it's been a great uh, opportunity to work with a few of these councils. I'm, I'm, I must mention before I introduce the next panelist that there are 70 to 80 industry sector focused panels. And of course, today, with the presence of all of you, uh, sirs and lady, this is part of the National Council of Sports and Sports Infrastructure. And moving straight, uh, my old friend Manisha Malhotra, I would like to introduce her. She leads the Sports Excellence Program of, at JSW. JSW is a very strong supporter of sports in, in, in addition to being an industry leader. And the Jindals and Manisha are, are taking that effort to the next level. So over to you, Manisha. Thank you, Karan. Um, that's very kind of you. But um, I think this is a great, um, I mean, all of us at JSW are super excited about Fit India. I mean, we truly really believe that this is something that can be the catalyst for change and actually unite a nation. Um, you know, I'm sure all of you guys have seen the statistics. So obviously, India has a population, I mean, 65% of our population is under the age of 35. But what, what a lot of you may not know is that at least 30 to 45% of those of that group is, is considered inactive. And what they mean by inactive is that they do less than 30 minutes of exercise or physical activity per day, which is actually really appalling because, I mean, if you if you read about it, the, the fittest nation in the world is, is I'm, I'm sure many of you all may not be able to guess, is actually a small country in Africa called Uganda, where only 7% of the population does less than 30 minutes of activity. So, I mean, with that in mind, I think that that it is it is a no brainer that promoting physical activity is the new imperative. And this is not for creating champions or anything like that. It is more for public health, for the well-being of a nation and the well-being of its people. So it's going to have many different views. And, and I think a, a fit country is always something that that, you know, the benefits of it uh, run through many, many, many verticals. The, the promotion and fitness of an organization, I mean, in, in a, in especially in our organization, uh, we, we are lucky to have promoters who are very, very, uh, let's say, fitness fanatics. I mean, both Mr. Jindal and Park work out and, and love sport and fitness from football to squash to tennis to running. They do it pretty much all. And while we, the JSW group has done a lot in terms of Olympic sport, and uh, the elite level of sport this is something that really needs uh, needs a little you know impetus for us to kind of work on i mean we the the, the company has always put uh, fitness as it, at, at the forefront each and every one of our power plants whether it's jsw energy in himachal has a boxing academy and a track and fitness uh, fitness facilities of course vijayanagar has the wonderful um, not only the Inspire Institute of Sport, but also several, um, like a cricket field, a swimming pool, and a gym, and things like that. So we've actually introduced um, outlets and infrastructure for fitness for each and every one of at least our um, employees. But um, it's time to try and take the next step. And I think that the government and the private sector um, can, you know, this is a very some, something that they can partner on for a movement which can now take root and take it to the next level. And this kind, I mean, India is a huge country and we need a collaboration of everybody. And it's important that we all kind of come on the table and, and in our own small way, have small programs which then can be collectively um, under the umbrella of Fit India. And this is something that we can, is has taken, I mean, it's done, had several steps over the past few years and now it's time that we kind of work on you know different specific programs that we can kind of like offer to the to the regular people and the regular citizens um it's also important to note that you know jsw is a nation building for us is is at the core of everything we do and uh, so there's no different for sport and it is a common threat and sport can tie into so many different verticals that it's important to nurture these young 
uh, Indians who can not only develop and grow to represent the country, but then also be fit and healthy citizens. Um, I, I do believe that corporate India should realize the many benefits of an ally, like allying the government with this Fit India movement, not only from being an athlete and the well-being, but to a positive and healthy individual. This will give the corporate sector huge benefits, which they will be able to see. And not only that, it can be the first step that we can say um, is for India's um, you know, arrival to be a global and economic superpower. Wow. I think uh, I think Manisha, you didn't mince your words, and I think that's uh, that's what this sector means and and leads from. And uh, thank you for that. Um, along with the uh, you know sports and fitness, also is is you know the mental fitness. And I would like to go on to Mr. Monjit Sharma next. Mr. Monjit Sharma is from iOS Sports and Entertainment, and uh, they've completed 15 years of their existence. Uh, this month, actually, congratulations. And they are the exclusive marketing agency of the IOA. And they also manage some very, very prominent athletes, uh, including our, our very famous Medicom, Vijender, Hema Das, Monica Batra, and I think uh, a whole host and galaxy of maybe 20 plus more athletes. So, Monjit, the floor is yours. Let's, yeah, uh, let's you, see what you have to say. Uh, thank you, Karan. A pleasure to be here. Uh, I'll try to keep this uh, short and simple. Uh, just this other, the other day, I was discussing with a friend of mine, and uh, we were in a discussion. The thing that came up, uh, we had just realized that we are a nation that has been bereft of sporting heroes. Except cricket, since 1983, our country has struggled uh, to find winners in sport. But that slowly changed. Slowly and gradually, sports persons uh, in other research, uh, disciplines started excelling in their craft. We suddenly had uh, world champions, Olympic medal winners, and then we struck gold there. New stars, new sports, and new conversations emerged. With new stars came a new mass following that not only recognizes the, the skill behind the sport, but also the importance of fitness. Fitness has now become the new mantra, and this following has now been given due importance by the government, and corporates have a wonderful opportunity to integrate the Fit India movement into its curriculum. Uh, broadly, uh, CSR activities uh, are already being practiced by a lot of corporates, and this, uh, has uh, uh, one of the uh, things that corporates are doing through CSR activities has been remarkable. Also a deeper and effective program for its employees and their families who make a sizable chunk of the population can also have a multiplier effect. A fitter employee ultimately uh, leads to greater productivity and uh, weekly fitness activities like office uh, in offices like yoga and meditation stress combat strategies which should be introduced and this can go on and as uh, as collectively it can be a, become a huge success and reach out to a lot more people <clears throat> also uh, one thing that we realized uh, in this whole uh, lockdown period was that uh, people had time for the first time and what used to be a small dinner walk has become a more concentrated effort in fitness i mean in every locality that you stay in or you must have seen hordes of people coming out for the walk uh, visiting parks doing the jogging cycling whatever this force can be harnessed by uh, the corporates tying up with the local uh, RWAs, establishing community programs. Also probably introduce a local star athlete, which can be motivational and entice more people to join. Uh, small little things that corporates can put their money in, which will give them the returns, but ultimately in the collective whole, it can become a very big, uh, uh, a very big movement. 
so touch on the other key points of discussion uh, that Asocam has laid out. Uh, I think the return for sport is uh, very important in the current scenario. Uh, it's just not about uh, returning to sport and then uh, uh, enjoying your sporting activities. I think the return to sport conveys a much larger message. It's about positivity. It's about telling the people, telling the citizens that we are winning the battle against the virus. It's uh, telling the whole world that India is back. Though some countries have already started soccer and boxing and uh, a few other sports, uh, we would definitely recommend the sports activities, of course, under very, very tight uh, SOPs and uh, uh, maybe in a very closed door environment. But uh, we should uh, have people competing again which will be a big morale booster also to the athletes uh, who are currently training, especially for the Olympics. And some of these athletes, as you rightly mentioned, will be already handy, like uh, Mary and Hima and Mirawai Chanu. Uh, I think uh, the message between uh, just getting sports back and sending a much larger message that sports uh, signifies that the, we are here, uh, we are winning, and we need to overcome this situation that we are currently in. Uh, gym uh, equipment and sports good is something, uh, an area is not of, of our expertise, but I believe there has been a surge in personal and home gym equipment. But what has happened is online fitness classes have uh, really gone up. Uh, we recently did a tie-up with uh, uh, one of the sporting uh, verticals, and uh, Mary and Vijinder actually took uh, uh, did uh, their exercise and fitness routine on video, which uh, uh, which this vertical uh, showed. And uh, India being a country where there are people hero worship uh, uh, Bollywood stars and athletes. It's a great motivating factor, and this has really worked. Uh, more of these coming up with a lot of other athletes that can uh, inspire people to take up fitness uh, on much uh, uh, on a much uh, stronger plane, and uh, we hope this continues. Uh, in this trying Thank times, uh, uh, just uh, in in this trying times, I think the only uh, only thing that is constant is uh, sport and fitness. And I think uh, it's time we gave that due recognition and corporates have a much larger place to play in uh, getting this on. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sharma. I think uh, unleashing the power of technology and online and the soft power, which is the talent itself, is I think going to be a huge accelerator to the Fit India movement. And to take that to another speaker is a, a very, very prominent. We have an Olympian in the house with us, Mr. Sanjeeva Singh, uh, Arjuna and Dronacharya awardee himself. And sir, you now being part of the Tata group, and we know uh, the length and breadth of even that group and how passionate they are about fitness. And uh, we'd like you to share a couple of uh, your uh, inputs and efforts towards uh, the Fit India movement, sir. Uh, first of all, let me uh, uh, welcome Honorable Sport Minister Sri Kiran Rijuji, all the SHM members, and my fellow panelists and past friends. It, it is indeed gives me a great pleasure to be here amongst the August gathering and to share my observations. One thing Corona has taught us that we need to be safe and healthy. And for that to be, we need to be physically fit. So the immunity of the body, which you can see in the corona time, is all because of physical fitness. So that is very, very important part. And as a sporting nation, we have to uh, enhance that. Now, many of you may not be aware, but our Honorable Minister, Sri Kiran Yujiji, uh, in the lo corona lockdown, what he has done, a wonderful thing which he has done is that he started the first online movement for the Fit India. He ensured that all the disciplines across the country 
along with the sports authority of india we started the online training program for train the trainer the grassroots development as also the development program for the competitive sports so thanks to you congratulations to anwar sir with you the four you created history in my 38 years of life i have never seen an online uh, sports fitness program which you started on the 16th of april and thereafter again on 1st june so humbly i want to thank you and for the wonderful gesture which you have done for the entire sporting nation because the entire country let me tell you more than 10000 of the citizens across india were live with us on the yoga on the circuit training on the gymnasium on the physical fitness exercises as well as coaching them on the mental physical and the technical aspect so thank you sir for the wonderful gesture the ministry of sport and science has taken at the same time let me now coming back to the role of the corporate india i think so it will not uh, it will be worth mentioning many of you may not be aware but the founder of the corporate movement in india was jamshed ji nusanwan ji tata many of you may not be aware that 1904 he wrote a letter uh, honorable mr sir he wrote a letter to his son dulab ji tata that time we were we were forming the tata steel and tata nagar and he wrote in that letter reserve large areas for parks for hockey and for the uh, sports uh, facilities so that was the uh, the vision of the great founder of the tata group uh, sir jumshed ji nushanwan ji tata and you will be happy to note that thereafter the tata nagar came into existence tata steel came into existence and durab ji went on to become the first uh, president of the indian olympic association he formed the indian olympic association and under his leadership the first olympic gold medal came to india and they were the first tata was the first to stand both in the 1920 and for olympics and the 24 olympics they sponsored the entire indian contingent which went there so that was the role of the corporate india but now coming to the brass tech sir there are four ways in which a corporate can really help the indian sports and the fit in the movement and i'll give you some examples as the chief of sports of tata steel what we actually started doing in tata steel was one was infrastructure development sir it is very very important that the corporates come forward to develop the infrastructure for example we we started the jrd tata sports complex today it's the hub for the football league sir and where is international meet we started through the tata trust we have started going to the entire northeast and to all other places creating cradles of sporting facilities in the hinterland in the rural india because we feel that rural india is the one way if we can really harness the talent there it can make a difference so infrastructure support is very important the second important part is support to the schools while we were in jamshedpur what we did was with all the 54 schools we started a five star fitness program now this five star fitness program was able to grade all the students into the one star to five star so what happened was that people started knowing the physical fitness level because you need you need to start them young you need to start training the, the, the because the values and the the culture actually uh, get embodied at a very young age and that is where we started in the school level not only that with the sports department which we had formed it we had more than 20 padam shri arjun award in drona chavachara body we started going to the school sir to train the boys and girls and the first period of all the schools in jamshedpur was known as the games period because they wanted to start the entire study with fun so therefore we started training them we created excellent centers and where we invited all these school students to learn under the rajana wadi what they can learn so that was one way to inculcate a sporting awareness and what we did was we every annual sporting event of all the 54 schools was conducted in the jari tata sports complex so that the boys and girls could see they feel odd when they went to a jari sports complex and conducted the sports event there the other thing which we started doing was sir that uh, conducting the national sporting event it's very very important that the corporate india should come forward to conduct and sponsor all the national sports event they can take up one one sport and with the kiran rijju sir and uh, with corporate affairs ministry we can do that then what will happen is the the public and the society at large will get exposed to the national events and that is what we did in, in tata steel in jamshedpur and created the uh, sporting culture there the fourth thing we started doing was on setting up academies and excellence centers so the academies whether it was the tata archi can be the tata football academy the tata hockey academy the athletic academy we produced in span of 10 years over 100 international medals in world cup world championship asian games and asian championship so that was the power of harnessing the talent from the rural india 
and training them. This all can be possible. My only request to our honorable minister will be that can we ensure that every we have so many corporates, but let one corporate adopt one sport. Because then what will happen is, and one state adopt one sport, just like hockey, if you look at Orissa, they have adopted hockey. So similarly, if one sport, one state adopts one sport and puts the entire machinery there, one corporate adopts one sport, then what is going to happen with the SHM, with the FIKI, with all the corporate uh, uh, industries, they will actually then focus on that sport and bring it to a level as Hyundai has done for uh, the archery in Korea. Today, the entire Korean system, 39, Olympic medals in a span of the last eight Olympics. That is what has happened. There are three things, sir, which I wanted to request, Honorable Minister, sir, and this is very important, which can help the entire uh, inculcation of the Fit India movement. Uh, creation of the sporting facilities as part of the corporate environment responsibility, sir. Sir, the Ministry of uh, Corporate Environment has put that 1% to 2% of the, uh, the any project has to be spent on corporate environment responsibility. But sports is not featuring there. If along with the health and the other infrastructure, sports can be added, then what is going to happen is nearly 5 to 10 crores, which one, one any project comes up with, a 500 crore project, that will go to develop the sporting infrastructure. The second is sir, uh, pushing the municipal corporation across the entire country, barring uh, Mumbai. You will find that in Mumbai, they have created a very good sir, scheme that whenever a development happens, an urban development happens, you need to create an amenity. Now, that amenity could be a sporting amenity. So, if through the Ministry of Sports, we can push all the municipal corporation across the country, that as and when the development happens of urban development, they create an amenity which is done by the developer when we develop the project. So, what will happen is, uh, we are just to tell you, sir, uh, Tata Housing is developing the biggest uh, gymnasium center, and we are going to invite you to come to inaugurate it in the month of October. Uh, this is a huge, uh, the biggest uh, gymnastic center in the entire country. And this is getting, uh, we are requesting the CM and yourself to kindly come and inaugurate in October, sir. The other thing is, sir, adoption of schools by all the industries. While the SHM and the FIKI is there and all the other uh, uh, bodies, what we can do is every industry, if they adopt five to 10 schools in the vicinity and create sporting structures, create uh, sporting facilities, take care of the uh, capability building of the PTI teacher as well as the, as the, uh, as the, uh, uh, the small uh, diploma holder. So if we can create capability building of our PTI as well as sporting infrastructure in and around the, uh, the, the industries, that will go a long way, sir. And the fourth point, which is very, very important, is that how can we, while there's a lot of focus in India in education and what is there in minutes on the subject, but can we create a sports subject? In the schools, we say just like in many of the things that have happened across the world, uh, just like we have a grading in sports, we give one, uh, similarly, an A plus in a sporting discipline if he or she adopts and comes to a state level or a Kelo India scheme or any uh, interstate or a, a interdistrict tournament. So then what happens, the sportsman also, compared to his own uh, colleague which are educating, he also gets a A plus point. So maybe something like that, a grading system in the school can also go a long way in developing the entire and creating a fit in their movement. And I'm sure with the presence of our honorable minister, I know he's such a sports lover and he goes all out. I'm sure with him and the various bodies which are there, uh, India will definitely become a fit India and we look forward to a sporting nation in the Tokyo Olympics uh, when we win. Thanks to honorable minister, sir, and to SHM and all the bodies to having uh, given such a platform to create all the like-minded corporate to come forward to help sports. Thank you, Sanjeeva. Thank you. I think, uh, I think uh, on behalf of uh, Tata and a lot of corporates, I think Sanjeeva has given an excellent rollout plan straight from the heart, just like his archery. He's straight to the target. So thank you very much, sir. And another very, very important element, and uh, for that, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Shri Rajesh Kharbandaji, who I've uh, had the good fortune to meet last year in his factory. And uh, one thing I can say that the sports ecosystem needs a lot of support in manufacturing. In fact, Asocham, with, uh, with, uh, with the blessings of the sports ministry, and I think somewhere even the corporate uh, uh, ministry, I think, is being uh, is being uh, doing a task force on 
setting up a paper on sports equipment manufacturing and gym manufacturing, gym equipment manufacturing. And I think uh, Rajesh with Nivea, I think uh, we can talk about how not just Punjab, but other parts of our country should also be given a lot of SOPs and incentives. And over to you to talk about the importance of manufacturing sports goods. So please unmute your microphone. Hello. Hello. Perfect. Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfect. Uh, thank you, Karan, for that introduction. And uh, Mr. Riju, I'm glad that I'm addressing you today. Being um, uh, from the manufacturing industry, the sports goods manufacturer, I would like to bring in the perspective of uh, the sports goods manufacturers here. I would like to narrate a few totally different observations, uh, which I would collaborate at the end. Uh, first of it is volleyball. Volleyball has always been the one of the most popular sport in India. But as the other games start getting more popular, volleyball participation declined. I would say in the recent past 20 years back, we as an industry used to produce more volleyball than football. And suddenly the popularity started declining. And something wonderful happened, the lockdown. And we observed that suddenly volleyball demand has in last two months equaled the football, which has never happened in last 20 years. Similarly, we have observed that uh, sales of football has not declined during uh, the lockdown. Though there are no competitions happening, there are no schools which are open, still we see that overall buying of football is almost at the same level, which is normally in the month of June and July. And another example is badminton. I'm sure most of uh, uh, the panelists here would have definitely once again pride their hand on the game of badminton during this lockdown with their families and with their kids. So what is the common factor in all the above points? Uh, the game that requires the minimum amount of infrastructure has the potential to grow fastest in India. Like cricket hasn't seen much of government support in all the decades, but because you can draw a cricket on the wall and start playing cricket, Similarly, you put up a string and start playing volleyball or badminton. And similarly, put two bricks and start playing football in rural India. These games are known as poor man sports in our industry. I'm not talking about the competitive sports. I'm talking about the mass participation, which would help the larger population to stay fit. And how can corporate India help in that? Uh, the financial need for the basic infrastructure is very, very limited in these games. Pole for volleyball or badminton, a goalpost for uh, football or a ring for basketball board don't need too much of investment from any corporate CS, CSR budget. If you start installing these small goals, poles and nets in a rural area, in the semi-rural area, in the unused parks. Unfortunately, parks today, the kids are not allowed to play in the parks because it's not a playground. But still, there are a lot of parks in the urban India which are not utilized and which can be like putting up a two poles or a ring for basketball would induce people to come and play there. I, would, I look at it in a way that planting a tree putting up a, 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 a pole would, is like planting a tree. It would give you green shoots every year with people coming in, playing in every season. And like football, uh, like a, a tree, it will give you uh, flowers and fruits for many generations to come. So it's a very small investment, but it would help the larger workforce to go back home and practice at a very, very low budget, practice or enjoy sports. Uh, once it starts happening, there can be interdepartment tournaments, inter-industry tournaments in the corporate world, which would help the larger participation of people coming in and playing. Uh, that's what I'm trying to submit, that this is how the chain would grow. It's not only the competitive sports, 
but we had to make the pyramid the base of the pyramid wider more participation by everyone by the workforce would give us a bigger pool to select people from and get into the competitive sport and in getting encouraged from this initial engagement of the workforce or the general public i'm sure the corporate world would look at putting more money into the infrastructure and preparing and helping to produce the champions for the country which would eventually go and win medals for the country thank you very much thank you thank you uh, rajesh ji that was uh, brief and to the point and uh, very interesting to know thank you. Thank very interesting you, uh, rajesh ji that was uh, brief and to the point and uh, very interesting to know very interesting that even during lockdown which is so true the appetite for sports has 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 and indeed needs to be encouraged even further uh, and above all the tagline of a fit india i would now like to move on to our very next speaker and uh, from where he comes it always uh, reminds us of bright sunshine beaches and, and 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 just a wonderful address that india has in goa i must also say that our honorable minister shri kiran riju ji i remember just before covid because in the run up to the national games was to be hosted in goa he went and inaugurated in one day some very interesting and number of sports stadia and infrastructure under the sports authority of goa so i think goa as a state uh, like many others but just because of the timing of what i witnessed personally with uh, our honorable minister and uh, with mr prabhu desai i would like to talk about uh, how goa is uh, uh, looking at preparedness and what is happening over there and how can that be an example for other states and uts to follow to you mr prabhu ji Thank you so much, uh, Karan and uh, Asocham in particular for this wonderful uh, webinar. The the time is very short, and we have a number of issues to tackle in about five minutes. Uh, without much ado, I would like to move on to the uh, role of corporate for promotion of uh, Fit India. Uh, the opportunities are huge and uh, i'm sure in the in the days to come months to come sitting more on our uh, children's going uh, somehow the country has lost uh, the track as regard uh, emphasis on fitness at school level plus 2 level and college level gone are the days when uh, uh, children is to get engaged in mass drill mass pt calisthenics lazy malati karti uh, uh, and of course games and sports so then there was scouts and guys movement uh, being thoroughly uh, promoted but in In the last uh, decade or so, or maybe two decades, we have seen decline on the part to in themselves in physical act as the uh, sports as the integrable part. Unfortunately, uh, people working in the field of it. So unless and until. the approach attitude of the heads of the school and the educationist uh, uh, I, I think uh, it will be worth the age group of five years talking about standard one to maybe graduation post graduation 
and their involvement in different physical education activities as compared to other nations like, like maybe be uh, England, Sweden, after Finland or Iceland, Germany, uh, and Ren, who is in the nearly drawn curriculum, we follow this. Uh, it will be very difficult for us. Uh, I take this opportunity. The Honorable Minister, as everyone coming, and he knows this, has landing football player. You can see his videos on YouTube practicing football. Uh, recently, just before Corona, he made two trips to Goa and seen for himself the uh, international standard infrastructure our state has developed because we want to make Goa as the uh, national international sports hub so that uh, in the years to come, we could uh, further consolidate on, on the sports culture. What the strong sports culture that we have uh, in Goa, thanks to uh, the uh, Portuguese rule for 50 years, SG has said uh, volleyball along with football has been a very popular sport here. Apart from that, newer sports have also emerged like boxing, taekwondo, swimming, uh, and uh, table tennis, badminton. Our players have been doing very well at the zonal level, national level. Our athletes, though we are a small state, has been also doing well at Kelo India. All, all said and done, uh, I would like to suggest taking this opportunity that Goa intends to open uh, certain sports academies in the years to come after everything stabilizes. Uh, this pandemic has made a huge impact uh, economically uh, for the entire nation for that matter. And I would like to also suggest the Honorable Minister that if he could uh, hold a meeting of all the corporates who are supporting sports and if the corporates could be divided into different clusters, uh, according to our regions, uh, east, west, north, south, and the central region, so, so that uh, the governments in such states will be uh, in a better position to approach these corporates for not only Fit India movement promotion, but also for organizing uh, zonal, national, and international level events. Uh, our state has developed infrastructure worth 430 crores for the upcoming uh, national games, the 36 national games. And on the advice of the uh, Honorable Minister and his ministry, we have recently written to IOA that uh, we are unable to hold the games because of the pandemic in the month of October, November. And we'll be looking forward to uh, the pandemic, uh, you know, effect getting lesser and lesser and in the months to come maybe IOA, Goa government uh, uh, and the union sports ministry could sit together and formulate the plan for the uh, ensuing uh, 36th national games. Uh, I would also like to suggest that we must try and reinvent and revive the star system that was uh, in vogue uh, while we were schooling 40 years back, you know, one star, two star, three star. Wherein you gauge the fitness of the child, the school going, the high secondary going uh, student, and accordingly assess his or her fitness and re recommend remedial majors so that they can be taken care of as mathematics teacher will take extra pain in teaching mathematics to the people who are low on maths. Similarly, a PE teacher could also lay emphasis on children who are uh, low on sports and games or their fitness. So likewise, I think uh, we could really revive uh, the, the olden time wherein uh, people is to, children is to give more emphasis on sports because they, they knew that unless and until they would develop their bodies, it will be very difficult for them to uh, make their, uh, you know, scholastic uh, performances or cognitive function at their optimum level. Uh, there have been thousands of research to prove who 
that if you are good at sport, uh, you will develop your hippocampus very nicely. That's a many times one read would be sufficient for the children uh, to try and uh, recollect uh, the answers during the exams. So people earlier years knew. Now, thanks to various uh, technological gadgets, mobile, uh, I, uh, mobile, and then uh, iPad and Kindle and whatnot, uh, people have been children have been ref uh, refraining from going outdoor. They don't want to go and sweat out on the playground, but rather uh, enjoy all the technological gadgets sitting in their drawing room. So unless and until the emphasis will change, the focus will change, the educationists will also realize the importance of physical education and sports and involvement in games and sports to develop their body, to develop their mind, to develop their emotions, uh, we do not see a bright future. So the Union Ministry for Sports has a huge role apart from emphasizing on the government that uh, uh, their ministry must be uh, rated equally on the equal footing as regard the HRD ministry. You would see nearly one and a half lakh crore budget given to a HRD ministry as compared to 2005 with which the Han minister will have to manage uh, their key to their transport uh, and the workforce that uh, the coach all over India in their uh, while on the one hand, the initiatives uh, by the Honorable Sports Minister, the Honorable ensure that India becomes fitter and to uh, uh, where is the other countries which are doing what's beginning with US, England, Great Britain, for that matter, France, Russia. And so you think tried and related one single country and followed their physical education program in its later and spirit and try and replicate the entire processes, uh, protocols, so that uh, India in the next decade or so or two decades would emerge as one of the fittest nations. As Madam Malhotra has said, uh, we have the uh, demographic dividend in our favor. It's one of the youngest nations in the world, and there is no reason why uh, if uh, such policies are implemented with little force and regimentation, why we should be lagging behind. Thank you so much, uh, sir. I invite all, all the uh, panelists to visit Goa and to see for themselves. Uh, we have been a center for ISL, I League. We have been a center for Iron Man and uh, various other marathons that are uh, and uh, state level association, which we give some monetary support, stadium support to ensure that uh, one and a half to two lakh children population of 15 lakh would participate wholehearted games and sports. So, and as regards the state we are uh, that you see on the playground, we have Goma Football Development nurtures about 5,000 footballers on day to day basis in a different territory. No, that's true, that's true, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Desai. What do you know? I, th I think the audio is a little uh, bouncing there, but thank you, uh, Mr. Prabhu Desai, for your for your words and your encouragement and your ideas. And of course, Goa is a is a great example. In fact, uh, moving towards uh, our respected uh, Shri Kiran Riju uh, in fact, uh, he's also mentioned it, and we've read about it and seen it. The potential of Northeast has also traditionally created multiple heroes. 
the Northeast can actually also be a very, very strong hub for manufacturing, training, education, nutrition, and all the elements that go into the role of a fit India. In fact, I would like to invite uh, the Honorable Minister, and also before the Honorable Minister comes on board, I'd like to mention on behalf of uh, Sri uh, Vineet uh, Agarwal and Asocham that the Asocham is working very closely with the Commerce Ministry and on sports goods and gym equipment for a roadmap to create and reinforce the Make in India, Made for the World campaign, which also is important alongside the Fit India. And we obviously seek your support and guidance as we take that initiative uh, with this council at ASOCHAN. So over to you, uh, Minister Sir, and thank you once again for sparing your time on this day for this uh, very important time. To you, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, is, is it the order? I think uh, yeah, I, I think the uh, the administration is in touch with the uh, minister sir's office. I think he should be uh, he should be up in a few seconds. Yes, sir. We are checking. I think they're just re-switching on, sir. A couple more minutes, Max. Sorry, gentlemen and lady. So five minutes more.
He's he, he's there, gentlemen. Uh, Minister Sir is, is joining. Is it okay now? Karan, can you hear me? We, we, can, hear you, sir. we can hear you. Okay. Uh, sure. I think it's okay. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you. I don't know. This sometimes uh, in the nick of the time it happens. It was all okay throughout the day. <laughs> You're perfectly fine, so, audible, and you're looking great, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I have heard all of you. I'm very excited to have such a uh, quick and very uh, precision kind of uh, suggestions to the point. Uh, those observations you made and some suggestions which you had put forward, these are very well uh, wholeheartedly. I welcome it. And I'll definitely try to integrate all those points into our uh, framing of policies and executions, as well as looking forward to work together with you all as a team. Without the corporate world, government cannot drive anything. It is uh, on your strength, your effort, and all your ideas. I always uh, confidently say that India will be one of the greatest sporting powerhouse in the years to come. So in the, on the basis of the potential, I say it, and you are our potential. I'm very happy to join the discussion on the role of corporate India for Fit India. So when, when we launched this Fit India movement uh, one year back, not fully one year yet because it was launched on the National Sports Day on 29th of August. So Honorable Prime Minister, while launching Fit India movement, had said certain things. And one of the things he said was, look at the corporate leadership today. Everybody is fit. If you remember, everybody who is in the corporate house today, they are physically, mentally fit. So that is leadership. Just now, our uh, um, one of our friend was mentioning about um, the Jindal, uh, uh, that Inspire Institute of Sports, how the leadership is so fit. In the same manner, I've said across the board, it has become a mantra and it has, uh, you know, taken as a way of life. That is why if I, as a minister, remains inactive physically. And people will say that minister is not leading by example. So I also try to be active, as active as possible. So it's just a way of showing things that despite our round the clock busy schedule, we can still take out time to maintain our fitness level to, to uh, something you can say that I'm a fit man. So this is something, uh, you know, very common thing. So when we launched Fit India movement, we said it is only uh, a movement which government just launched it. It is actually people's movement. It is not the government's movement. It's the people's movement so that we can take it to the nook and corner of the country. And before launching of Fit India movement, I've seen some of the countries have done it. Like Australia has done uh, 10,000 steps. So every day, everybody walks around, everybody takes steps. So a thousand steps, every Australian has to take 10,000 steps in a day. So that gives you a level of fitness. Like in the United Kingdom, they started, uh, yes, she can. So that means to, to tell the girls that you can be fit. So with a slogan, you launch and you see the impact. Britain today is challenging USA and China uh, for the top three. So likewise, how Australia has become a great sporting powerhouse. In the same manner, like China had done some 20 years back, every country, those who are up there in the Olympic scale, they have done certain movement. Because it's not only the sports for excellence. It is the people's participation, people's involvement, people's uh, you know, outlook. So when we talk about sports uh, as a way of life, the base has to be fitness. So when fitness is a way of life, it leads to great sporting culture. So in the meantime, I had also tried to change certain outlook. You know, normally in Indian society, parents would prefer children to study. So I keep telling them, don't force a six years old child, five years old child, seven years old child to study, study, study all the time. You know, if we put too much pressure, study, 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 it is unnecessary, undue burden on the child. 
let the child grow up naturally he will study definitely give good guidance good school good teaching everything but give the space for the physical growth let the child grow naturally and you shape them later on don't impose at the age of four years he has to become a doctor he has to become an engineer so i tr see i have seen how these scandinavian countries or in other countries they, have done. they don't really allow child to touch books and anything till five six seven years age much later when it is fit for them they do it but we impose too much at too early and it's unnecessary leading to mental pressure and it's not good for the child's growth so in the new education policy i have already given my suggestions and i'm hopeful i cannot make announcement here but i'm very hopeful um, education minister our hrd minister and i had been in close coordination we were discussing so in the new education policy we will have sports not as extracurricular activities but sports should be part of education sports is actually education so many positive things are coming up and you must have seen in last few years uh, the ranking of india is you know rising last year we did best ever performance in the world wrestling championship we did best ever in the boxing world championship nine of indian boxers have already qualified for the olympics we might get some more birds uh, our badminton pv sindhu for the first time any indian won the world championship we are you know improving in our ranking everywhere hockey now our men's hockey fourth in the world women nine in the world and fourth means they are equal to number one two three they, they can beat anybody so i have interacted with them there are certain things which is not a matter of policy but i have done to just create positivity that i'm personally interacting with every athlete i'm giving time i know it's difficult to take out time the expectation becomes so much sometimes three four hundred athletes wants to meet me they want to meet me in a day it's difficult to take out time but because i have started a culture where minister's door is open for our athletes not only international athletes the national athletes also can come and see me so i have made myself available to the sports persons these are to create a positive atmosphere amongst the people so that you know earlier days there was like nepotism favoritism policy makers unreachable sports persons are not heard coaches are not being heard like sanjeeva singh he has got a fantastic idea and his uh, knowledge about the sports excellent his scientific knowledge practical knowledge these are to be integrated while as a minister when i sign a file when i take a decision i have to know the things it's not enough that i am briefed by my secretary alone or my joint secretary or my private secretary or my senior officials minister has to have the ability to understand and listen to the people so that is one thing another is i since today see i'm talking to you i'm listening to you so i have got a new dimension i'm just hearing from you another side because sports on itself will not be enough sports has to be a career option sports must provide you livelihood sports must you must be able to give you that that kind of dignity respect recognition and the commercial success without commercial success how will you drive the sports generate funds through sports for promotion of the sports and sports is a big industry how many people are employed in the sports sports sector it's unlimited it's one of the biggest industry actually if we understand a country like india our human resource is abundant but the only things we have to augment that resource the human resources is the, actually the biggest resources for anybody for any community any nation so i'm very happy that sohm has taken a lead role in promoting the fit india movement i know you have already done so many things and you are closely working with our ministry to promote fit india movement the fitness culture not only in your corporate sector but to promote the other parts of the section of the society so it's very heartening to see that uh, you have initiated this thing and uh, um, uh, my officials my team in the sports authority of india they are always eager to work with you so whenever sochm has to uh, come out with certain uh, strategy or some kind of a plan programs 
you can always come to me and through my uh, as a as a chairman of the sports authority of india i will instruct my dg and the entire team to work with you as a close knit team so that we can really work together that these are very important secondly some uh, i would just would like to uh, uh, inform some of the things which are very relevant uh, we have made certain policy changes in recent time uh, very because of the covid 19 we are unable to implement some of the decisions like each corporate uh, will will be you know advised to adopt certain discipline sports to focus it doesn't stop you from taking up all other sports but focus in the same manner we have already written to the states to choose two sp uh, two sports discipline of their strength for example if manipur chooses say boxing and sipak thakrao they can do football they can do other things they can do archery but they have to focus see india has 36 states and union territories if we work as 36 countries so each each state will focus on certain sporting disciplines and that will give the result see we have been playing sports but why we have won only eight gold medals so far so thing is we have to ensure that we give focus so there are two things in my mind one is sports for excellence to 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 raise the level of india's participation in the olympics asian games commonwealth world championship all that level so that is for excellence another is sports for the general people sports as a culture sport for everybody now i am not going to olympic by but i nothing stops me from playing sports so every one of you must be playing either badminton table tennis golf something you must be playing so it's a way of life so we would like to encourage that every indian must play some games and then if you don't play games at all you must do some activities some exercise something to keep yourself busy your body should be fit so there are certain things we are working at the excellence uh, the purpose something on the level of the grassroots where we would like to promote the fitness culture so when we talk about the fitness culture we have taken a decision that uh, every district we will identify a school that means you can imagine the size of our country will identify a school where we will help financially also in other uh, uh, strengthening uh, whatever requirement we will do we will provide pet teacher so for example one of our retired coach he may not be you know given an opportunity to coach uh, high level teams or state level teams so we will uh, get them get that particular coach in one of the school in the rural areas so he will be employed and he will be a PT, PT teacher. Right now, some of our PT teachers are not qualified. They are just recruited on the basis of uh, just a requirement of the school, but they are not actually qualified. So we, will, we are giving online coaching training to the uh, coaches also. So this, this uh, you know, our uh, former players can be engaged as a coach in the local club, in a school. In the same manner, we have identified each state will have one center of excellence for the sports see we have already declared 23 national center of excellence that is national level so national center of excellence spread across the country 23 we might add some more but right now just uh, uh, four months back i have announced 23 national center of excellence there our olympians and our world champions and those who are going for the that level of competition they will be trained in that ncoe national center of excellence then we we have already identified uh, state level center of excellence then in the district we will identify a school then for the pet teacher that is for the fitness fit in the movement we will be employing the uh, physical education teachers and we will be providing certain help so that the schools you know they can utilize their services in the same manner we are also starting this fit india movement along with the hrd ministry in the large scale so for your information i was told just uh, uh, last week that 2.5 lakhs schools have already registered under our fit india school uh, program so you can imagine the size 
so already so we have already developed protocol everything is ready the app all the necessary protocol standards everything's already ready so 2.5 lakh schools registered within six seven months is i feel in india is an achievement and we hope that in the next one year time we would be able to achieve at least 80 percent of the schools in india would be registered under fit india program where we will have this star ranking system which was mentioned earlier if a school has certain you know uh, standard of practicing fitness and all we will be giving that fit india that flag you know fit india flag is a recognition that yes this school is recognized as fit india school then if a school has certain uh, level of you know provisions for the sports training coaching like they have coaches for some sports discipline or they've started some kind of uh, you know proper training and proper facilities then we will give say three star fit india three star if if some schools have all kind of facilities say at least three uh, indoor stadium facilities or three professional coach, coaches or some kind of uh, accommodation facilities for the young students who are taking up sports as their career then we will give five star because that will be ranked higher so this kind of i'm not explaining perfectly in detail these are already you know they're in the module all, all everything is prepared in details so that way we will be encouraging the schools to adopt uh, all kind of activities which will lead to promotion of sports and fitness so this is what we are doing at this point of time besides that we have taken certain decisions which will promote and encourage the uh, coaches in india you know just last week i had removed the the capping of two lakhs as the maximum salary which an indian coach can draw i i found uh, it was very inappropriate that we pay 10 lakhs 15 lakhs per month to a foreign coach but we, our uh, own system says that we can't pay more than 2 lakhs to indian coach this was very discriminatory so i said no nothing doing we have some of the excellent coaches indian coaches our own so we will uh, make the you know them work better show some result we are ready to pay more so this kind of thing and then i had visited some of the hostels where the the quality of the food the diet for the athletes are so crucial and important and these were you know um, earlier i don't know how nobody could pay attention so i have removed all kind of ceilings so i've said every athlete whether he's a junior athlete or senior athlete he will be given all kind of supplements food whatever is required whatever is being recommended by the the coaches the experts or whoever says you know it's not minister who should decide who should eat how much i'm not a technical person to tell that you should eat two pieces of chicken it is not uh, you know proper for the government to decide on all these things so this kind of thing these are small small things i have uh, taken decision in consultation with of course the people on the field so in the same manner you know in this uh, as sanjeeva singh was mentioning during this uh, lockdown period i thought we must make best use of this uh, lockdown period so we we have uh, tried to turn this uh, crisis into opportunity so the online coaching training and uh, training uh, for the coaches so many things have happened and i i'm receiving lots of good positive feedbacks from various sections i'm very happy that uh, you know uh, things are being uh, you know received in a positive way and massive participations are being uh, witnessed in past three months so and uh, some of the uh, suggestions some of the comments which you all made i think i have shared all these things in the various uh, other forum also but let me say one thing as a as a society or as a country we have set our target we have uh, we have an objective and the targets have been set for example i have set a target that india should be in the top 10 by 2028 los angeles olympics now if you see how india will reach there 
by merely setting a target alone is not enough but target is absolutely necessary now if i see the olympic uh, uh, the performance of each countries in the in the in the present form if india wins say 10 to 12 gold medal in olympics then you will be in the top 10 most likely because the top four or five countries they win you know like china united states always they are in above 40 gold medal 50 gold medal like that then fourth fifth you know 25 18 19 like that so today's time if you hit double digit you are likely to be there in the uh, top 10 but the size of india we are not a country who will be playing one or two disciplines for example in the northern africa like ethiopia or kenya or morocco they are into middle distance running and marathon because of the situation climatic condition their genes and all support them in that particular field but india is a large country with a varied geographical conditions people from ladakh arunachal pradesh himachal then people from coastal regions tribal regions central india north india so we have the varieties we are a size we are a country of continental size so a, a country of continental size cannot be you know focusing on two or three disciplines so we have identified so far 14 disciplines as priority sports so that priority 14 will be there but besides that i have uh, you know kept my op options open we will pick up some more discipline and add them into category of priority but right now 14 are the priority sports where india will give focus for example archery wrestling boxing hockey shooting fencing uh, these are these are some of the uh, sport disciplines where we have you know given uh, priority status 14 disciplines but as i said we we are open to adding more just because we have the potential india can and then that is why i have talked about each states you know picking up each state should pick up their priority and then where corporate role will also become very very important so when i say top 10 in eight years time so we identify say a uh, 10 year old boy now he will be 18 years old by the time los angeles olympic comes so the talent scouting at this level is very very critical that is why on the one hand our hello india games are becoming very successful and popular we are identifying and picking up talents from the those not only the first second third if we see potential we pick them up even if they have not won the medal in the hello india games and there are various other platforms so we are going to have the talent identification team regional wise so for south india we will have a separate team they will be responsible for identifying talents for example for hockey there will be separate team badminton separate wrestling separate so we will pick up those identified young talented boys and girls and we will start the tops junior so which i have declared last time the target olympic podium right now we have the senior top scheme going on that means those who are picked up under the top scheme they have to worry nothing everything is handled by the government their stay accommodation their food their coaching foreign exposure everything besides that we give 50000 rupees as pocket expenditure that means once an athlete is identified and put under the top scheme then the athlete has to worry for nothing including the uh, conditions of their parents so now we i am de deciding it to be extended to the junior so when i that is why i said if i make announcement that india should be in top 10 and if i don't take concrete steps what is the point of making an announcement if i'm not following up with a concrete strategy and planning and steps so that is why the very uh, you know fundamental reason for starting tops junior and then uh, encouraging more of our young athletes and get them into our center that is the philosophy behind it and then we have a center of excellence will be junior so from next next uh, season we will have for example i'm just giving an example if we identify 
six national center of excellence for swimming if we have one in kolkata one in delhi tarkotra stadium one in uh, goa one in the bangalore we will divide them into senior and junior so some of those national center of excellence will be devoted to the juniors and some of them will cater to the training of the seniors so likewise discipline wise we will be categorizing our executive plan so there are many things we are doing it so one is fit india movement creating sports uh, uh, sporting culture at the grassroots level targeting the fitness making the uh, you know people think positively towards you know encouraging the fitness regime sporting and everything that is one thing but at the same time i will not get myself defocused from the high level excellence target for the olympics and the world championship so i believe see you are from the corporate world we always talk about the gdp growth and all so many people believe that winning one olympic medal might be equivalent to 1% of gdp growth because that gives so much of confidence happiness it lifts the mood of the nation you know can you imagine other than uh, an indian landing someday in moon what else can give the country so much of celebration is so either you win a world cup championship or you you win a gold medal in olympics where the whole country celebrates even if you diplomatically achieve many things in united nations security council also that's only for the elite general people will not know they will not be part of the celebration but if you win olympic gold if you if you win world cup that is the celebration for every citizen so it lifts the moral you know it gives you so much of energy so so far when as a child when i see that india is not there in the olympic medal table you know till 1996 you are aware when leander won the bronze medal in the atlanta olympics there was a gap of 44 years the last individual medal bronze medal uh, kashaba yadav was in helsinki olympics 1952 thereafter no indian won any individual medal till 1996 atlanta olympics then after atlanta another one bronze in sydney olympics by karnam maneshwari karnam maneshwari got it again one then 2004 we got uh, rathor got a silver in athens olympics then we got multiple three medals in beijing then london you know it we got six no gold in london and then we won only two medals in rio olympics so that is the time when india won only two medals in rio olympics just after that prime minister announced that things should not go in the same manner as usual so he constituted that task force olympic task force so the task force had recommended many things and i am implementing most of those recommendations and the, the target olympic olympic podium scheme also is part of uh, you know that decision so there are many things which i feel that if we put in things together we will be there in the top 10 so i am putting my own name and my own uh, everything at stake that i already said in many platform that if india doesn't uh, figure in top 10 in, by 2020 at olympics then please treat me as a failed sports minister see it is it is unacceptable for me you know in a country a size of india not figuring in top 10 of the olympics and we are to satisfy with one or two medals this is something which is unacceptable so we have to take it up up as a challenge that is why i am trying to push it to the limits no it's such a heartening things to see the corporate world coming forward some of the corporate facilities are excellent so what i think those top athletes which we have identified through the federations they will be made to use the facilities of the corporate like for example i had gone to the inspire sports institute in bellary of the jsw group and they are already uh, you know giving the facilities for our top wrestlers and javelin throwers and other uh, uh, you know uh, top ranking athletes so in the same manner the tata the reliance all all the companies so we need to integrate 
the sports federation, the government, and the corporate. We have to come together and to ensure that we have to augment all our resources together and we move in same direction. It's very important. So in in last few years, I've seen the the role of corporate world is you know much more positive than what it used to be. And uh, I think just I have to request one thing to the corporate world that if all the bodies, SOHM, FICI, CIA, there are many bodies, there are some you know policy matter which uh, you know time to time it keeps coming about sports as industry from the finance ministry from the commerce ministry what are the relaxation to be given to the uh, manufacturing goods of the, those uh, sports goods and all for export for promotion so there are many things which are policy matter if entire uh, the bodies of the corporate world can come together and jointly submit or have a discussion then i can i can arrange a discussion with the uh, finance minister we can have a joint sitting then we can definitely have a conducive policy for the sports world for everyone those who are involved in sports so i think we need to have a more sitting like this and today as i said i i was uh, more interested in listening to what you feel rather than i give my sermon so <laughs> I, I heard you all. I was very happy, and I'm I'm forever ready and open to all the suggestions, advices, inputs. I will uh, looking. I'm looking forward for more such interactions. And as I said, if you have something to give me in writing, you can give, and you can uh, connect with your other sister organizations and um, submit it jointly. Also, it will be good. And today's uh, discussion on this Fit India is uh, something. Uh, very close to my heart, very close to every Indian. It is it is not proper that uh, majority of Indians are unfit. You know, country, we talk about country to be rich and prosperous. So country is just a concept. If the citizens are unfit, how will be country fit? That is why that harm fit to India fit. So if we are fit, means the nation is fit. If 70% of Indians are not fit physically, how can that country be fit? So this is as simple as that, but that has to be told. You know, that is why I tried to make, you know, fit in the movement uh, linked with many things. For example, on 2nd October, we started plugging run. So that means you joke around, you walk around, but you can pick up plastic liters, whatever on the street. So I'm trying to make it glamorous. You know, you can joke around park, but still doing cleanliness. So Swatch Bharat, fit India, all the movement, coming together so likewise we can we, we can innovate many things and make things interesting glamorous so let everyone involved so thank you so much uh, for for having me here on this uh, uh, very important discussion and SOHM as always has been uh, wonderful in all the things you do you put in your heart and soul and mind and you do think, things honestly so I will always appreciate and I always Take it as an honor to be invited and to be part of your whatever meeting or discussion seminar. I'm very happy to be part of it again. Thank you so much. Minister, sir, I, I would like to say that uh, I, I, I'm humbled by your approach, your micro to macro approach with fitness at the core, with the mission and vision of the Olympic medal tally of 2028 and working backwards. I think whatever you said for a conducive policy, I will definitely work with the leadership here at ASOCHAM with Sri Vineet Agarwal and the rest of the team to try and see what we can genuinely work together. You mentioned about opportunity in adversity. You mentioned about how these times and where we are as a nation with our demographics and our strength and where we can convert these to opportunities you spoke about right from grassroots to coaching the coaches so i i just feel in your few minutes the way you have outlined the theme of not just this webinar but where sports building as a nation should go and to achieve that i think is 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 very very commendable and 
you know you're leading it from the front and one can see that passion and not just on the screen today but over the months and time the way you've been you know stitching this together and i think uh, i think corporates pay uh, pay uh, play and they have to pay but corporates play a very very important role and i think uh, that's uh, very very visible here right from what vinit ji said in the beginning to tatas to jsw to what uh, mr desai part of your sports uh, uh, authority also said so i think collectively it's been it's been just a fantastic journey to see today uh, the path for us forward asocham would like to thank you and also as uh, as a minister as yourself as uh, how we can work together to build india as a much stronger sporting nation sir and uh, and definitely we'll come back to you and your ministry uh, with the leadership at asocham for the sports policy and the few other areas that we want to work together i'd like to thank each and every panelist on behalf of asocham and our delegates that have signed in online from from all the parts of the country uh, thank you so much everybody and also i myself represent uh, uh, i'm part of yes bank i've uh, been part of it uh, doing sports banking so we will also try and see what we can do to energize and uh, uh, you know add our bits in the uh, in the finance and advisory and all the technology and digital pieces that today finance and banking provide which is also important for the ecosystem but thank you minister sir for addressing every stakeholder of the sporting ecosystem today and i think all the influencers opinion makers stakeholders today part of it that is represented on this panel and asocham thank you and uh, i would leave it at that and uh, thank you everyone for your time thank you thank and you look forward thank you, to a thank, you. thank you very much thank you